Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stuart Van Hooser. I am the police chief here in Cobb County. Behind me is my chief of staff, Major Brian Kitchens. Behind me to my left is Deputy Chief Dan Farrell. I think you understand what we are here to talk about. We are here to talk about the officer-involved shooting from late Friday evening, which, of course, crime scene extended into Saturday morning. Um, my first message is thank you to the media for being here for us and for being here for our community. You're an integral part of our communication to the community, and that's one of the reasons that I'm standing before you today. Uh, so thank you for being here. My first message is that our police department, and me personally, does not want to see incidents end like this one ended. That is not our goal. It's anything but our goal. We spend a lot of money and a lot of time trying to save the life of individuals, no matter who they are, no matter what they're involved in. And we do that often. We do not want to see incidents end like this. We don't want our police officers to go through the stress of taking a life or having to use deadly force against an individual. But we train them to do that when they need to. It's hard on them, it's hard on their families. It's hard on their loved ones. It's extremely difficult to the families and the loved ones of the person who was killed Friday evening. And it's difficult to express verbally our condolences for the family. But again, this is not what we want to see happen. So from me personally and from our department, we extend our condolences, our thoughts and prayers, and our support to the officers involved in this, to their families, and of course to the family uh, of the deceased individual. We're in somewhat of, a, of an awkward situation, and I'll try to explain that a little bit for you. But before I do that, I want to explain how we get here and what we do with our officer-involved shootings. Many of you in the media know, but for those who are listening out there uh, in our community, we want them to know what we believe in, what I believe in as a person, and what we believe in as a department. We recognize that Community trust is exceptionally important to our success as police officers in trying to protect people. If that trust erodes, we have a more difficult time with what we term community policing. We need our community partners. And we, we do that so well in Cobb County and I think police in general are getting better at community policing. But you cannot do community policing without community trust. I'm before you today because I want to make sure that our community's trust continues to grow and that we are being transparent in this and every other incident that we have. I've stood before you multiple times when there were issues that weren't very pleasant or did not appear very pleasant to our community. Um, and we have incredible support in our community and we are finding support right now with this. But there are some questions that have popped up in the media coverage of this. And those questions have caused me concern because I was briefed on this this weekend. There are pieces of evidence that I have seen and there is a whole boatload of evidence that I have not seen that nobody has seen yet. And so these media reports are causing me concern because Number one, I do not want the trust of our department to be impacted by these. And I also want this, not only the media coverage of it, but also the investigation itself to be based on corroboration of people's statements, facts, evidence, not just somebody's statement. Um, having said that, many of the things that I've read in the media over the past few days are understandably 
full of emotion. And so I recognize that the family and the friends are going through an amazing, amazingly difficult time right now. So I'm here to let those in the community know where we stand as a department and what we believe in. Um, a long time ago, several years ago, we began to have outside agencies investigate our officer-involved shootings. We did that not only because there was a call for it, but also because we believed in it. And we believe that that's the most transparent way to have these investigated. And so that is the protocol that we have right now. In that, there are some great advantages, far more advantages than disadvantages. But one of the disadvantages is we are not investigating our own shootings. So there is conjecture that I gain from the evidence that I see. There is conjecture based on a paraphrasing of what has happened that is given to me. But direct investigation of this for me to conduct with my officers or somebody in my department doing it uh, is not our responsibility right now. And I believe wholeheartedly in the integrity of the Georgia Bureau of Investigations to conduct a fair and impartial investigation in this as they have countless times for us and as you have seen over this past weekend they are currently doing with other cases so my message is we are being transparent we always intend to be transparent and even when we have to answer hard questions or maybe come in and say we can answer some questions and we cannot answer others we're still going to stand before you and tell you this and offer our condolences to the family and offer our support for the officers and their families because this is a difficult situation for everybody. So with that, what we're left with is a situation where I'm going to do a press conference to a degree and I'm going to even take some questions, but a lot of the answers I'm not going to be able to, to, to answer. What I don't want to have happen is that we have a situation where speculation from people that were not there, people that did not see this, people that did not witness this, are asserting things that is then reported in the media in a way that maybe turns out not to be true. And those are the concerns that I've had in reading what I've read the past few days. I don't want to contribute to that by saying something that I might believe is true but that I don't have the facts and the evidence to back it up. So today I will be somewhat guarded in what I say because I have no choice. And I'm going to refer many of these questions to the GBI um, for, for answers. But some uh, I can answer today. And what I do intend to do is answer the ones that I can answer that you guys have asked us that I know about through our PIO office. And we're going to open up the floor. We have the only real question that I saw from the media, I believe we can answer that question. The other questions that you may give me, I'll have to play that by ear and figure out whether or not I can, I can answer that. And there will be, if it's anything factual about this particular investigation, in all likelihood I might refer you to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation because I do not want to contribute to a he said, she said in the media and I do not want to speculate and have you guys report things that I say that really the GBI is going to be the, uh, the expert and the authority on when this, when this investigation is concluded. So the review of the questions that we have gotten from the media since Friday evening, we only had one that wasn't already kind of answered. Uh, most of them were generic. What is going on on Cobb Parkway in front of the Walgreens? And so we opened up. I know we brought uh, Officer uh, Wilson out that night. Uh, I, I was at the scene. There was no request from media for um, an on-camera or for sound from me. Uh, there was only one news crew there when I got there. It was very, very late at night, understandably. So this opportunity is good, and I appreciate it because I really did want to express our condolences to the family and our support for our officers. But the only outstanding question that I saw was, what was he wanted for? You know, what was this? And I can totally understand that question, why that's a valid question. 
And I will say that I was told what he was wanted for this weekend, but I don't like to just give that information as fact until I see it. Today I was able to actually see what he was wanted for, and I'm not going to tell you specifically everything. We can have a, a more comprehensive look at that and have our PIO office put that out to you guys, but I'll tell you in general what it was. There are multiple warrants that this individual was wanted for. Um, and I'm not going to go through every one of them, but I'll hit a few of the highlights. Um, and I know everybody already has Mr. Jenkins' information correct as far as how old he was, his name, and all that good information I believe has already been released. But uh, Mr. Jenkins was uh, wanted for um, failure to appear on a uh, felon in possession of a firearm charge in Fulton County. That is a problem um, simply because of the gun violence that we are seeing in our community right now, not only against citizens, but also against officers, and to be honest, against uh, known criminals of, of, of varying gangs and so forth. And I'm not in any way implying that he was involved in some type of crime. I'm just telling you that the, the use of guns by criminals right now is a very, very, very big problem in our society. Um, that, that warrant was issued this spring. There's another probation violation. It's a felony warrant as well with statewide pickup. Um, there's another felony warrant for probation violation uh, for cocaine. And there is another probation violation warrant for obstruction of an officer, theft, and other charges. The uh, agencies that are seeking this individual is Lowndes County, Georgia, and Fulton County, and I believe that's the only two. But again, uh, that, that information was reviewed pretty quickly today, and I will refer you for factual information to what our PIOs will put out a little bit later today on that. That was the uh, only question that we saw, uh, we did talk to the GBI to see if there were any questions they got that we weren't getting and we did not see. Um, I will say this. A few weeks ago, we had an incident where we tried to make a traffic stop of an individual and that individual ran in the car. Uh, we, uh, we did not pursue that individual beyond a certain point because our chase policy has some precautions to safeguard our community. We have reviewed that report and we believe there are some links between that, in that, that pursuit and this individual. However, what we, we believe that this was potentially follow up from that particular pursuit. That's what led the officers to that area that night it was in a continuing investigation on that pursuit. That is what we believe. Um, so with that, to give you just a little bit of context of how this has gone back, what we have is a wanted individual that we knew about that we were doing follow-up on in order to take that individual into, into custody and the incident itself unfolded and that's where I'm going to probably stop talking about the actual incident because that is the GBI's portion of the investigation that I do not have right now enough information Although I can tell you I do have information, but I'm not going to wade into much of that, if any, now, because that is the job of the GBI to continue that investigation unhindered by statements from me or unaffected by that. So we definitely want to respect that independent investigation and allow them to proceed as they see fit and release information as they see fit. So um, I will tell you that the three big things that we read about this weekend, multiple shots, 25 shots being fired, 
uh, his hands up and that we mistook, mistook a cell phone for a gun. All those things, um, I would just say look for corroborating evidence on all those three things as this investigation continues. Uh, I, I have been briefed on this and those three things stood out to me in these articles this weekend as something that uh, I did not see evidence of this weekend. So. I would just ask that you patiently wait for solid information corroborating evidence for, for those statements or any other statements that are made with conjecture rather than eyewitness accounts or actual evidence. So for me, most everything else that I would tell you would be conjecture if you're talking about this incident and I do not want to form those opinions in your minds without that being factual or supported by evidence. So I do not plan to make any more proactive statements. I would say that if you do have further questions, it is going to take the GBI a while to get those answers, but they are the source for the criminal investigation into this particular incident. We do conduct, as you know, an administrative investigation for our policies and procedures and training and make sure that there aren't things that we can improve. Uh, that is subordinate to the criminal investigation and particularly normally follows it or trails the investigation. So we do have that going on in our own department and we'll continue that investigation as we go forward. Um, so. I'll wrap that up with a, a thank you to you guys, uh, condolences to Mr. Jenkins and to Mr. Jenkins' family, and ask again for your support, prayers, and thoughts for our officers and for the family that's been affected by this. Uh, I will take a few questions, um, and if I can answer them, I will answer them, probably more process-wise than, than, than about actually what happened and what evidence we have right now, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Probably the big one, and again, don't know if you can answer this, did he have a gun, did he threaten officers, did he fire? First of all, um, I can honestly answer some of those because I don't know the answer to some of them, but in the GBI release, they talk about a weapon being found on the scene. Uh, that was not our weapon. Um, and the other two questions were what, uh, Denise, I'm sorry. Officers with that weapon or did he fire at? I would not know that. We do not interview our officer on the night of this incident uh, for legal reasons. That would be something that once the GBI conducts those interviews, we will know. Can you tell us more about a few weeks ago what exactly led to that pursuit and initiating it? I can't really tell you that many details of that about that. I have seen the report. I have not read it thoroughly enough to to articulate much more than that. I I don't have enough details to give you much more than that. And I know you were just talking about whether or not there was a phone. Are y'all able to say? I know GBI released that he there was a gun found. Are you able to say if his phone was found in his hands or not? I, I don't know, so I have good cover there with the GBI, but I will say that um, most people have phones and it would shock me if he did not have a phone, but the GBI did have, uh, find a weapon that, that uh, belonged to the suspect, we believe. Can you tell us how you guys found him in that Walgreens and the decision to go in? I don't know if you guys have said anything about the decision to go in the Walgreens rather than wait for him out. Um, just kind of talk about that? Yeah, I, I, I have been told what led them there. Again, I was told that through a couple of channels. So I did not get this directly from the officer. So I will not really comment on that, but I do think I have a good understanding of what happened. Um, the decision to go into the Walgreens uh, is something that in an administrative interview and in administrative evaluation of what happened, we'll look at that and all the other decision making that was going on in the minds of the officers. And I will say this, I don't know that there's a more stressful job in America than putting on this uniform every day. My job is stressful, but it's a different kind of stress. I do not believe that one of you is fixing to try to kill me. And when I see officers who spend weeks 
trying to find an individual who represents a danger to Metro Atlanta who's already shown that he obstructs police. And I'm not saying that as a matter of fact. I'm just telling you what I saw in the outstanding warrant that has been known previously to be carrying weapons based on these outstanding warrants. And they proactively go look for this individual um, for a time if in fact all that is accurate. They might not make the best decisions ever. And I'm not even saying that's a wrong decision. That might be a great decision because there's all kinds of arguments that I could make back to you that would make that a very bad decision to let him get out where there's more people. There's a bar right next door with a lot of people. Uh, but, but we always look at better ways to do things, always. And we will do that, no doubt, in this situation. Um, I can tell you I'm very proud of these officers for working hard in their spare time because not everybody works hard in any job. But this job, the harder they work, the more danger they place themselves in. And the more situations like this they get placed in as well. So uh, I know that was a little bit more than you asked for, but on the actual facts of this case, because I heard that through uh, several layers fr from the officers to this person to me, I don't think it's wise for me because I think that would be speculating and that's really what we're here for today is trying to distinguish fact from speculation so that maybe some of the media coverage could be uh, you know a little bit more well-rounded for our community to digest. So I'll be transparent I know one of our reports this weekend was the one where someone said that they witnessed it and yes. the hands were up. Obviously from the GBI the gun belonged to him, there was a gun on scene and he's apparently a felon in possession, so he shouldn't have had a gun. Um, can you can you just kind of talk to those? You kind of did, but when witnesses do come forward, you didn't witness it and say that because that's the narrative we go on. Yes. Because the GBI is in the news conference. Yes. We heard from you guys, so obviously that was the one narrative we have. Yes, sir. Um, and it wasn't you know like to go against you guys. It's just that's what they told us they saw. So could you address that? Great, 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 great question. And I hope everybody can hear uh, the questions. I should have repeated them. Yes, sir, I can. And that's the very purpose of this meeting. Um, you know, believe it or not, I had a rough weekend with, with uh, being up pretty much a lot and working a lot of hours. Maybe we could have even done this yesterday. But when we saw several news accounts, we decided, hey, we need to talk. But to your point, sir, 100% as I started this off with, I thank y'all for coming here. Looks like everybody is here. You don't have to do that. I understand why it was reported that way. You have news. That voice is gonna be reported in one manner or another. So I 100% am supportive of, of reporting that. I wanted to just put some context on that and to be very transparent that we are not hiding in silence even though I really can't say much because it's not our investigation. It's a little bit counterintuitive to have a press conference when the whole time you understand that you're limited in what you can really say to answer these specific questions that the community has brought up. But yes, um, no, no in, in, if, if there was any um, inference that I was displeased with the media, absolutely not. And I'm certainly not displeased with the people who feel this way. I just want to give context to it that it I would never talk to somebody who made an allegation against one of you or one of our community members and then believe that was fact without getting evidence without you know corroborating it fully and then at that point we would maybe make some decisions I just want everybody to understand that right now we don't have that corroboration and I'm asking people just to to tap the brakes a little bit, give the GBI a chance to get their ducks in a row. They are an outstanding agency and they will do the right thing. And I hope you know that Cobb County Police does the right thing. If we don't do right, we take training, mentoring, discipline, termination, whatever is appropriate, we do that as an agency. And I don't think that it's easy for people to know that without us getting in front of cameras and saying it. And so if anything, these news reports prompted this, this, this press conference, which is a good thing. That's why I appreciate you guys coming out. And do you mind sharing how many police officers were in the Walgreens when this happened? You know, I don't mind it, but I do believe it is weighing into the evidence in this case, and I think I'm gonna withhold that and, and allow that to be answered by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. I can tell you that it's not something I would ever hide. I just feel like 
the bright line to me is what happened that night. Those things, I think, are being investigated by GBI, and I think they're the best spokesperson for those things, not me. Another number question that's not about that night. Do we know how many different counties uh, this gentleman has warrants out of? You mentioned Lowndes and Fulton County. I think two. I think it's Fulton and Lowndes County, Georgia, but I am not positive on that. Again, I would refer back to, we'll, we'll try to put something out through Sergeant Smith's office about what precisely those charges are. A little bit more on the status of the officers involved in this situation. You might not be able to answer this, but who the identity of some of the officers were involved in this, as well as you know if they're still on active duty right now or if they're on leave right now. I will not identify the officers. They are on administrative leave right now, which which is uh, what we do commonly when we have an officer involved shooting. Thank you for that question. Uh, if, if you're out of steam, I'm good. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't answer more questions, but. Uh, thank you for coming, and um, uh, we will uh, update you guys through this latest release on the warrant so you have a little bit more specific information. Thank you all.